Hello and welcome back to our cottage garden. A really exciting video for you today because we're going to be showing you our spring bulb display while it's at its peak, which is absolutely incredible and I cannot wait to show you. Um, a little bit of wider context for you um, because the weather conditions drastically affect how the bulbs perform. So we have had a really, really wet winter and that can often mean that bulbs don't survive if they are perennial, um, they can rot in the ground and I think that has happened to quite a lot of them and you'll see that as we're walking around. Um, so something to keep in mind for the things that have been less successful around the garden. Um, but this week's been quite beautiful as you can see, it's lovely and sunny, a bit windy but we've had some gorgeous sunsets and I have had the best time just sitting outside with a cup of tea and watching the sunset and if it's a bit cold we can sit in the greenhouse and watch all of the daffodils and bulbs. It isn't just our garden, that seems to have been affected by the weather last year and this year. Um, I went to Herefordshire recently to look at the wild daffodils and even in the woodlands there the flowers were not very dense at all compared to what you'd usually expect. So I think it has been a little bit of a difficult winter for the bulbs um, but even in spite of that um, the garden's looking amazing and I cannot wait to show you around. But before we get to it I have some exciting news to share with you um, and that is that I'm going to be on Alan Titchmarsh's Gardening Club on ITV. Um, so there's three dates if you want to watch. There is April the 8th at 2pm, April the 15th at 2pm and then May the 6th at 2pm. Um, and if you miss that live you can catch it on ITV's catch-up app ITVX. For those of you that are in the States I'm not exactly sure how the process will look of accessing the programme so if anyone knows please do share in the comments to help out other viewers that are in the States um, but if you're in the UK the app will be fine. Also if you enjoy this video please do remember to like comment and subscribe as it really really helps the channel grow and will enable us to make more videos for you in the future. And this is what I am talking about when I say I've been sat in the garden with a cup of tea just staring at things. This is what I've been looking at. It's incredible. Um, and it has a really long flowering time too, which is great. Um, so what we have in here are Narcissus Pueblo. That's this daffodil that you see here. Um, there's 200 bulbs in this entire area, um, but it looks much denser than that. And I think it's because they have these multiple flower heads on one stem. So where you've got clusters of like eight or 10 bulbs, you have so many flowers in one group. It looks really dense and really amazing. And I'm actually really surprised by how densely packed this looks compared to the bulbs that I put in the ground in autumn. I did not feel like it would look this dense. Um, so 200 of those. And then you might be surprised to hear we've actually got 800 snakes head fritillaries in this bit of the grass. I don't think looking at this, it looks like there's 800 at all. I'd say maybe there's 200, uh, perhaps even less than that. Um, they're not all flowering yet. I can see some are tiny, tiny stems only just emerging. So what I expect will happen will be over the next few weeks, we'll see more of these. Um, there's a mix of purple and white but only two white ones have actually flowered so far from what I can see. Um, but these I'm really interested to grow because they quite like wet conditions, which is unusual for a bulb. So if we have a lot of rain in the winter, as we did this year, in theory, these will still thrive by the time spring rolls around. So it's quite reassuring, really, if you've got things with different strengths in the garden that can withstand different weather conditions. And then the other thing that we have in here that you can't see at the moment are woodland anemones. Um, I actually planted 500 of these and not a single one has flowered. Um, you can see some foliage from them, so, and I know they are very slow to establish. I'm hoping that we might see a few of those next year, but I'm not going to top them up. I think I've tried twice and I've had really, really low success rate with planting them from uh, the corms. I'm not sure if they're corms or bulbs, they're like long stringy things. Um, low success rate on those, even lower than the snakes had fritillaries. So I think I'll give those a miss and anything that develops in subsequent years is a bonus um, but I don't think it needs an awful lot more than what is here there's already a really nice understory of wild primroses that I don't want to disturb too much 
and that is a kind of nice base layer and then we've got the taller layers of the fritillaries and daffodils. The other thing that I added to this area in autumn were snowdrop bulbs and I was actually quite worried about how I'd done this because I've planted a snowdrop called Waranawi that has humongous leaves compared to the other snowdrop types. Um, I was worried that these were going to crisp over and look really singed and ugly while the rest is in flower but thankfully they have held their colour really nicely and they kind of just look like long grass. I don't think they're too distracting. Um, so I am pleased with that because the idea is it extends the period of flowering for this mini meadow. So we get a nice bit of snowdrop action earlier in the year and then in spring we get this. After this, I'll let it continue growing and it will be full of cow parsley and whatever else has self-seeded. We do also have some bluebells in this area. Um, they are just what we found in the garden when we moved in. I don't mention them too much because they're Spanish bluebells, which I know is a little bit controversial and you are supposed to try and plant English ones if possible to keep the native variety thriving. Is what it is, I tried to remove them and it was just too difficult and all of the neighbors have them too. So I think it's fighting a losing battle if I try to get rid of those. Um, and they are stunning and that's kind of the tricky situation but we've got loads of those that are naturalizing against the fences here um, so we will be looking forward to seeing those when they're in flower in the next week or two. I did show you this area last year and if you've been following us for a while you might remember it and I was actually quite embarrassed about how it looked last year. I think I added maybe a couple of hundred bulbs of each type and they were way too scarce when it came to the flowering period but I was majorly embarrassed because it was um, overlapping with when we did our Gardener's World segment and I was talking about how much I love the mini meadow and it's true I do love it and I did love it then but I think it didn't have a sort of wow factor it was very much a work in progress whereas now I look at it and it really reflects what I wanted to do with the space um, but that's gardening it's trial and error and everything takes a long time I think it's just quite hard to convey that message in a world where um, we're obsessed with instant results so this is two years into the process the conditions in this area are kind of woodland type conditions we're underneath a deciduous tree which is our oak tree um, so we get more sun exposure this time of year compared to summer when we get leaves on that tree and this area is largely shaded which becomes really nice for us because when it's hot you do want somewhere shady to sit and in spring we can grow flowers here but the reason i planted this is i'm quite keen on utilizing grass for um, as many reasons as possible. I think if you just have a lawn and you don't do anything with it, it's not that useful for the natural world. It's not that beautiful for us to look at. Um, so by planting bulbs in the grass, you make use of an otherwise unused area. And it's also really good for the pollinators. I can see some bees moving between the fritillaries at the moment as well. Um, but particularly, using this area because it's my favorite viewpoint of the house i love to sit on this step and watch the sunset and with this framing it it just feels like you're in a painting it's incredible i feel such a sense of magic when i look at this in terms of ongoing care for all of the bulbs that we want to last for years we just don't mow the lawn we leave them in place and let them die back naturally i'll leave it for at least six weeks potentially even longer i probably will leave this for two months because i'll be growing cow parsley and other such things in this area and i'll just mow around it um, it can look a bit messy but that's the price you pay for having something beautiful in spring So this is my cutting patch for tulips. Um, these are varieties that I just grow for the one year and then after the flowers are finished, I discard them because I want to keep using this bed for other things. Um, it's a bit of an experiment this year. So I always grow flowers. I always grow tulips in this particular bed, but because it was just last autumn that we added this screening, we lost a lot of sunlight. So these are very much in semi shade now. They don't get a lot of sun. So it's not ideal for tulips, but it's an experiment. I love growing them and I want to see if I still can in these new conditions and it looks fine actually like some of them are quite small and short but I think they will still flower so I'm really pleased with that. Um, the varieties that we have in here are Angelique and Black Hero and Aveon um, so I think this one that you can see flowering now is Aveon this kind of darker pink colour. Um, I'm confused why they are all flowering at such different rates I can only assume it's because that side is way more shadier than this side so these are probably flowering faster um, we'll see how it looks it looks like it might be a bit staggered this year but i'm still enjoying watching it 
after these tulips have finished flowering, I will lift the bulbs, um, mulch with a bit of compost just to keep the soil nice and healthy. And then I tend to use this as a seed bed. So I start things in here before I distribute them around the garden. Usually when I haven't decided where I'm gonna plant things. So last year I just used it to grow loads of chamomile and a bit of kale. But as I mentioned earlier, it is the bulbs that are new to the garden that are really, really thriving compared to the ones that have been in the ground for a few years that are sort of dwindling a little bit this year. Um, so stay tuned for our April garden tour because I expect I can show you this when it's in full bloom and it will look much nicer. Um, but we also have some really, really gorgeous daffodils behind me that I'm going to show you now as well. So in front of me, we have another new bed of daffodils. And if you watched our videos last year, you might remember that I cleared this bed out. Um, it was full of bamboo roots and it took me ages. It's taken me years to get rid of the bamboo. So it's really nice to have a reward of growing something that we want here. Um, and these daffodils, I actually just had surplus to requirements. So I popped them here um, with not much expectation. And actually they're one of my favorite things now. Um, I grew them with some iris early in the year. Um, iris reticulata and the iris didn't flower quite as well um, so it's really good to see this now but I don't know what variety these are um, I've been looking through the receipts of things that I've ordered and as far as I can tell I've only ordered um, Pueblo which is the one in the mini meadow behind me and then ice follies which have been and gone and they have a more yellower center than these ones so if you recognize this variety please do let me know what you think it is because um, I have no idea I'm going to keep trying to look um, and when I find out I will let you know um, but if you know, please share. I've also planted some on the other side against the duck house there. Um, so keep your fingers crossed. We'll just have to see how they do. Um, but again, I'm not gonna touch this in the autumn and winter and I'm gonna hope for the best and see if they reflower, which they should do. Um, this particular border has been <laughs> quite difficult actually. Um, I came into planting this with an idea of what I wanted to grow and most of the things that I put in didn't do very well. I really wanted to grow some Japanese anemones here and they're known for being quite a thug in the garden and they're quite difficult to get rid of but they all just died um, so something about this area doesn't lend itself to Japanese anemones. Um, I've got some geraniums in here which look like they're doing really well so we should see those as these daffodils start to die back but I love this area. The colors are so beautiful. So we have the daffodils and then we've got a few hellebores that are still looking really lovely next to it. Some primroses. And it's just like an amazing mix of soft pastel colors that I am absolutely in love with. Um, so I'm really, really pleased with this. Um, but next let's go and look at the borders and I can show you some other bulbs that I have been growing as perennials. Okay, so less impressive, um, but interesting anyway, I think. Um, the tulips that I grow as perennials in these borders have really not done very well. I'm assuming that it was because of the wet winters that we had. Um, so the ones that have been the most reliable are Design Impression here. Um, I always love these and they've done so well. Um, they've been in the ground for about four years and they have a really beautiful variegated leaf with kind of hints of creamy pink on the edge. Um, but these are starting to go over really, really quickly. I guess they've just not enjoyed the weather. Um, but they're the only things that I can really depend on. So if you watched the videos last year or even the year before, you might remember that we had a lot of red tulips on either side of me in these borders. I think we had maybe 400 to 600 of them. Uh, they were red impression and the problem with them was I didn't like them, but I couldn't get rid of them and they would come back every year. I'd planted them nice and deep because I thought they would be a softer pink. So I wasn't gonna go and dig them out one by one. But I think the wet winter has potentially just killed all of them off, which is um, actually quite convenient for me because I really didn't like them. Um, but also kind of sad because I admired them for how reliably they reflowered, um, particularly as people say that tulips aren't very good at reflowering. So what we have left are um, these, which are ivor ivory floridale. Um, again, not many of them have survived. I think we had a couple of hundred go in last year or the year before last rather. Um, looks like there's only a handful of them left, maybe about 20. Um, they're still beautiful. So I think these ones I will top up in autumn and winter just to get these tulips back. And fingers crossed, it's a drier winter this year. There are also some daffodils that I've added to this bed. They're called stainless and they're a really beautiful white variety. Um, this year they don't have an awful lot of buds on, but something to look forward to nonetheless. Um, and then the other thing that I've added was alliums and it's still too early to see these in flower, but there is a lot of promise. Um, so many of them popping up through the soil now. So these are Mount Everest, a really big white allium. And I think I added about 50 up here and then a few more closer to the house. Um, so we do have some of those to look forward to and thankfully they should return year on year. And then the only other 
another bulb that I have left to talk to you about is the crocuses, um, which you can see the foliage of here. I do think the foliage is a little bit messy and it does kind of ruin the um, wider landscape view of the garden. But for me, it feels worth it to see those crocuses early in the year. Um, we had a really bad year for crocuses, tons of foliage, but very few flowers. And then because the weather was so bad, if we did get flowers, they got battered really quickly. So um, these are they look like they're doing really well and hopefully these leaves will feed the bulb and next year we'll get a better display but it's definitely been a really mixed year for bulbs um, and I know a few other gardeners have said the same they said their crocuses just basically didn't appear this year and it was quite a mystery um, so fingers crossed for next year and if you want to see what the crocuses look like in a good year I'll link to last year's crocus lawn video um, which was much more exciting um, but now after all these bulbs have finished it will just be a case of letting the foliage grow nice and long um, and it can feed the bulb and return again next year so thank you for having a look around and I'll look forward to showing you around in our April tour remember to subscribe if you'd like to see how that goes.